Just got an incident come through of a dog in the Midlands area. You able to accept over? Are you friendly? Yeah, you just want a bit of loving, don't you? It could be a scold from boiling right. water. Horrible. Oh, sausage. Right now, there are dogs that need help. We don't get many toy Yorkies stuck in TV cabinets now. And there are heroes who are dedicated to saving them. I don't want to leave any animal in there. Why would you allow those dogs to look like that? Transforming their lives. It sounds like she's in a lot of distress. The nurse in me wanted to make him better. She just can't believe how lucky she is. <laughs> Finding them forever homes. I feel like a lucky boy. She deserves it after what she's been through. I think he's my guardian angel. Don't you, mate? And giving our four-legged best friends a second chance makes it all worthwhile. Him giving them that little ray of hope. They are the dog rescuers. Without a shadow of a doubt, this is why I do this job. Hello and welcome to The Dog Rescuers. Today we're following remarkable stories of the resilience and spirit of our canine companions. Like that show by Teddy here. Come on, Teddy, let's have a sit. We've earned it. Come on. Oh. Teddy was an Ewok in the Star Wars films. We'll also see the wonderful work of those who rescue dogs and the painstaking care and patience it can take to bring a dog back from the brink. Is a stormtrooper. Get him. Coming up, after an emotional goodbye to a loved pet whose owner can't look after her anymore. Oh, my God. Oh, it's dead sad, isn't it? I feel awful, because she's going to be, like, searching for us tonight, isn't Yeah, she will, yeah. Inspector Anthony Joins helps deaf Staffy Cross Isla begin a new life. This is the first day, really, of, it, of the rest of her life. Inspector Hershey Bowl deals with the aftermath of the biggest number of dogs being rescued from one house we've ever featured. We would move the washing machine and suddenly there'd be six faces looking at you. It was just incredible where they were able to hide. And we hear the extraordinary story of rescue dog Teddy, who helped bring his owner back to life. In a way, I think he's my guardian angel. Aren't you, mate? Hey, My guardian angel in disguise, you are. First, we're on the Wirral, where Inspector Anthony Joins is visiting a family who can't look after their five-year-old Staffy Cross Isla anymore. The owner's health has deteriorated quite, quite a lot, and they've decided as a family, quite reluctantly, that they want to sign the dog over. They don't want to sign the dog over, actually. They, they've decided that if they kept the dog, it would be f from selfish reasons. That They basically said, we, we can't meet her needs. She's a young Staffy type. Um, Staffy Cross, you know, full of energy, wants to go out and play, and they can basically offer it the backyard. As well as being a playful dog who isn't getting the exercise she needs, Isla has another problem too. We quite quickly realise that we think she's pretty much 100% deaf. Bull breeds are predisposed to, to having deafness uh, as a breed. Although giving her up is the right decision for this family, they aren't finding it easy. You're right. No. Oh, I know you wouldn't be. What's well, dead sad, isn't it? I'm a charity worker. That's what I am. I'm a uniformed charity worker. I feel awful because she's going to be like searching for us tonight, isn't yeah, she? Yeah, she will. Yeah. I know you probably feel like you've let her down a bit, but I you really haven't. Do. I, really do. I don't think you have at all. I think you've come to the right decision. <laughs> I feel that we, we genuinely make a difference on, on numerous fronts. They'll make her really comfortable, like, and I'll make sure that she has a good, proper good run. Yeah. Because it takes the edge off them then. Yeah, no problem. Oh. <laughs> she just nearly had my head over heels on the, uh, the, the rug. Take care. Come on, they're beautiful. Come on, they're beautiful. Come on. So this is Isla. Hey, girl. I keep reminding myself that she's, well, we, we suspect she's deaf. So I'm sort of saying, hey, hey girl, and she's like, say, there's, there's not, she doesn't really respond. White dogs carry the piebald gene, which can make them predisposed to being deaf. In it, look, here we go. It's a good girl. Come on. Oh, it's a good girl. Well done. Take her to the animal centre and get her, get her sort of settled in. 
she needs a good run. And obviously my job is, and it makes me feel more content about taking the, you know, the dog from its family um, and starting that process again is she needs to feel that the animal sense is a positive thing. So I try and make sure that she'll see that by giving her a nice run around, loads of treats, put her in her room with loads of toys and a nice comfy bed. And hopefully she'll realize that it's, it's not, this isn't a sad thing. You're beautiful. Hey, okay, good girl. Anthony's passenger is definitely curious about what's going on. All right, girl. You can hear it. It's quite, it's, it's a little bit humorous, but it's, it's quite sad actually. Because if she is deaf, she's not going to be able to, she's not going to be able to hear the, the vocalization she's making. So that's why it sounds quite different to most dogs that I've ever come across, really. But she's probably a little bit stressed, um, no doubt, because you know. I've just come and taken her from her, from her home, and she's in a she's now in the back of a van. So we'll try and make it as as nice and least stressful as possible for her today, and get her settled in as soon as we can. No poos or no wheeze and no sick. That's a good sign, isn't it? Can I put this on you? It's important Isla's ears are examined by a vet. But she's got other ideas. Come on, we'll have a good run in a minute. I promise you. Come on, girl. Come on in. Hello. Hiya. Hi, God. This is Isla. Oh, hi, Isla. She's got chronic ear problems. Yeah. Vet Becky McAlpine takes a look, and as well as being deaf, there are signs of infections. Yeah, her ears are really thick, and you can see all the scarring from where she's, she's had. Good girl. Lots of infections in the past. Sometimes they get blood collecting from scratching at their ears so much, and then it scars down like this. So I think she's had some oral hematomas in the past. And they're very pink. You're a good girl. You're being very brave. She's got good teeth. Yeah. She's very sweet. She is. She's lovely. She is. Um, so what would she need? You'd probably give her some drops to treat the infection side, and then. We'll sort of keep an eye on her, and if she's scratching lots, then we'll pop her on some steroids as well. Yeah. And that might help open up her ear canals a little bit. Anthony takes her to the kennels, and it's the time Isla's been waiting for. Lovely smells. A big run around. Hi. Hi, girl. It's a learning curve for me as well. I mean, even in the vets, I went to give her a little tap on the bum, because she, she, she loves being scratched, and she jumped out of her skin, and then I'm thinking, you know, it's, it's almost like training the human to, to, to learn how to deal with the dog, and, and that's what it'll be in terms of new owners as well, just making sure that they're fully briefed. But for now, it's time for Anthony to say goodbye. Come on. I always feel a little bit sad when I want to come in and sit with them in the kennels like this on the first day. You know, it's a dog at the end of the day. Is she going to think that I've done her a favour? Probably not. She's going to be a bit stressed now and a bit anxious, but, um, you know, she'll get real good care from the staff and the volunteers at the centre. You know, they'll be they'll be checking on her throughout the day. She'll have regular walks, um, which is obviously, you know, what dogs live for, really, and what she hasn't had for weeks. She's a very loving dog, actually, and she likes a lot of um, cuddles and interaction. I hope that her time is really short and that she gets me home really quickly. All right, girl, I'm going to go now. And she can't hear me anyway, can you? Find out what happens to this lovable softy and her ears later on. Every so often, an inspector deals with a truly shocking case, and that's just what happened 48 hours ago to Hershey Bowl. She was called by the police to a house after a woman died suddenly, leaving behind what they estimated to be 40 dogs. But when Hershey arrived, it was clear she was facing one of the toughest cases of her career. Multiple dog households are very challenging. You're acutely aware that you're dealing with a large amount of dogs and anything can happen. And with this job, I had no idea how many dogs I was taking out. They literally started appearing from absolutely everywhere. We would move the washing machine and suddenly there'd be six faces looking at you. Um, and it was just incredible where they were, you know, they were able to hide. The surviving owner was devastated at his wife's passing, and with so many dogs in one house, it was clear they needed to be removed. These dogs had never left the premises. They were almost like feral dogs in a way. You know, they didn't want to be handled. They were extremely frightened. 
you know, the, it, it was a very, very difficult situation. After 18 hours, Hershey had finally accounted for all of the dogs. After a head count, in the end, we removed 82 dogs. When you're dealing with 82 very frightened, uh, you know, dogs as well, you, you know, you, there's nothing you can do but do that as quickly uh, as you can, but also be aware that you've got to think about the welfare of those dogs. What you're doing is you're essentially doing something that takes a long time, but you're doing it 82 times, and it's a huge challenge. These are not pieces of paperwork or items of, of sort of electronic equipment that you're removing. These are living things, and they're scared and they're frightened. There's a whole load of animals then relying upon you on that day. It's extremely difficult. 82 dogs were loaded into 20 cages and transported in four vans to kennels where trained staff could assess their condition and temperament. Today, the ones identified as needing immediate veterinary attention are being examined by Mark Barton. And the one they are most concerned about is this fella. This is little AS81, little boy. Oh, sweetie. It's a lot worse than it was initially. Yeah, when we first saw it, it was the, the wound on the, on the ear flap, the pinna. Um, this bit here is mm. likely to be dead. Um, and likely to be have to be removed at some point when we get the infection under control. Right. Yesterday morning there was a small patch um, underneath his coat, and and when we started to clip it, we realised that it was a a much larger patch of of, of dead necrotic yeah. skin with with quite a large amount of of infection underneath. Right. Um, bless him. It must be quite sore. He's been very brave. So, so I imagine that um, he's under pain relief now. Yes, he's, yeah. uh, he's had antibiotics, anti-inflammatory pain, pain relief um, to help with that. We're also applying burns cream. Mark believes the wound was probably caused very recently by spilt boiling water. And with so many dogs in the house, it's very possible the owner didn't even realise the accident had happened. Just shows that you can't care for them properly if you've got no. that number of dogs um, and things that look look quite minor and, and quite benign, can end up in quite serious injuries. This poor dog must be in real pain, so Mark has called in Stephen Barabas to use a pioneering technique to help speed up his recovery. The laser will get rid of some of the infection. In this, what it might do, though, is you might lose the tip of that ear quicker, because okay. if that is dead, it's going to accelerate that process. OK. OK. We can do the wound first, yep. and then we'll do the ear, and just, just see how he tolerates it. OK. OK? Fine. The laser itself uses infrared, right. so you need to use goggles. Now, the infrared beams are going to go and increase blood flow, right. oxygenation, and also the tissue metabolism. So, right. so it does things which are happening anyway, it just accelerates it. For the dog, then, it, that's, this isn't a, obviously a painful treatment. Absolutely it doesn't, not. It doesn't feel anything, it, it's no. not aware of... It will of... be a little warm, but right. it would be like having a, a hot bean bag put on its side. The machine calibrates the size of the dog and the area of the wound and calculates how long the infrared session needs to be. It's a five and a half minute session, so I'm doing quite a long session for it, but it's quite an extensive wound. Right. And so I'm going to treat this like a grid pattern. I'm just going to work my way across the whole of it, but not have to keep it in contact, OK? So is your constant moving making sure it doesn't get too hot then as well? It's, it's partly down to that and partly because I want to cover the whole of the wound. Non-invasive. Uh -huh. The infrared is actually penetrating pretty deep down to the tissue, so it's not just working laterally around the sides of the wound. Yeah, it's starting to look redder. Indeed, you can see it coming. Yeah. You can actually see it weeping a little bit already. Right. Okay? Uh, and it will actually look a bit more active as it starts to stimulate that wound. So you're, you're, you're almost sort of um, forcing it to heal quicker. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. It's actually been falling asleep, so it just goes to show that it's not very invasive. No. Steve will also use the laser to treat the damaged ear. Quite painful, yeah. yeah Especially yeah. when we're going on the edges where the two different bits of tissue are, you, you react quite a lot. Oh, okay. you are good. The treatment will be regularly repeated and it should help speed up the little guy's recovery. We'll see how he does later on. Now, a dog's ears might not be something you think about very often, but they are more than just funnels for sound. They're, in fact, a very cleverly designed part of a dog's anatomy. 
And here to tell me more about them is Sam Gaines. Hi, Sam. Hello. Um, yeah, so dog's hearing has a wider frequency range than what ours does, and it's a lot more sensitive, so it means that they can hear higher frequency sounds than those that are ultrasonic. They've also um, got a lot more muscles in their ears than what we do, which means that they can move both together and also independently. Um, so that's great. It helps us to understand what they're feeling and for us to be able to recognise their emotions. So, in general, if a dog's ears are laid flat back against their head, it will mean that they're feeling scared or a little bit anxious. But if, like Teddy here, they're in a normal, nice, neutral position, then he's probably feeling quite relaxed and happy and content. Some dogs will have um, longer droopy ears, so for example like Spaniels, and that can be a little bit more difficult to tell how they're feeling compared to, say for example, a German Shepherd that would have really upright um, ears. So it is important that we look not just at ears, but also at other parts of their body, which will give us a good understanding of how they're feeling. So looking at where their tail is and also like their general body position and if they're looking quite relaxed. Teddy's permanently relaxed. He is very relaxed, isn't he? And he is a good example of having a little bit droopier ears, but... He's a nice, relaxed dog. Unfortunately, one dog whose ears are giving them some problems is poor Staffy Cross Isla. Five-year-old Isla is deaf. She also suffers from chronic ear infections, which are painful and uncomfortable. <coughs> Although she's been having regular ear drops, she's not been enjoying it. So she's come back to vet Becky and nurse Jan, who are going to try another approach. Come on, lady. So we're going to put in a long-acting drop today um, and then we'll put in another one in a week's time rather than do drops with it every day. It should be a bit more comfortable that way and hopefully her ears will clean up nice and fast. First, Becky needs to give Isla's ears a thorough clean. This has to be done under anaesthetic because a dog's ear canal is L-shaped and getting right to the bottom of it can be painful. There you go, nice deep breath, Isla. When they've got lots of wax build up in their ears, it makes them really itchy and uncomfortable. So if we get all the wax and all the gunk out, um, they should be a lot more comfortable for Isla. And also, it means that the drops are going to be able to work a lot better. It doesn't take long for her to conk out. So I'm just going to have a look down her ears now, so we can see. And check that her... Um, her tympanic membrane, so her eardrum, is intact. Which it is, that's good. So there's just lots of wax down there. Um, it's quite red and sore, so we'll give them a good clean. First, it's in with some sterile saline. And give it a good massage. You know you've gone far enough when you can hear it squelching. Look away if you're having your tea. It's probably been going on for a while, just because her ears are really um, thickened and slightly deformed. So that would suggest that she's had ongoing problems for quite some time, sort of months, if not longer. Just have another little look down now. There's still some particles deep down inside Isla's ear canal. I'm just going to get some forceps that are really long that I can feed through the otoscope and grab any chunks that are low down. But Isla's ear canal is too inflamed from all her old infections, so Becky tries something different. So I'm going to flush it instead to try and get the debris to come to the top. 20% of dogs have at least one ear infection in their life and it's one of the most common reasons a dog goes to the vets. They can be caused by allergies, parasites, yeast and bacteria infections, or a hormone imbalance. If you suspect your dog has a problem with their ears, take them to the vet as soon as possible. So we're just putting some sterile water down um, under a bit of pressure to help break any little last clogs off at the bottom and then bring them all back out through the soft catheter we've put down. Do we get any bits and bobs in there? Now the ears have had a proper clean, she can have her drops. So this is um, a long-acting drop. It's a thick gel that sits in the ear canal. It's quite good for the dogs that don't like having their ears cleaned or drops put in. We'll do one today and then she'll have another syringe put in in a week's time and hopefully that will solve her ear problems. OK, that's one ear done. 
They flip her over and do the same with Isla's left ear. Oh, she's got loads of stuff coming out of her. That looks nice and clean now. So we've got all the excess wax out of the ear canal, so we'll pop the other drops in. And then hopefully she'll be feeling a lot more comfy, although she might feel a bit sore initially, just from us digging around and getting everything out. It can irritate the ear a little bit, which is why we only do it if we have to, really. It's something that she might have problems with in the long term, just because her ears have got so changed as a result of all the infections. Her ear canal is very narrow and thickened now, so it's going to make a lot more prone to pick up other ones. But as long as you sort of keep an eye on it, she'll be able to keep on top of it. Yeah, you go in first. She'll come back in a week's time to have a second set of drops put in. But now Isla is popped back into the kennel to recuperate. Oh, triple blanket jam. Oh, I want to be in there. Yeah, have a little <laughs> snooze. Clean ears. Coming up, we find out how one of the 82 chihuahuas Hershey Bowl rescued has a real fear of people. It is, it is pure fear. It was never socialised, so all this is yeah. incredibly scary for him. And it's so bad, it may mean he can't be rehomed. If this plan of mine doesn't work, then, then Reggie will have to be put to sleep. And obviously, that is something that we desperately want to avoid. We hear the incredible story of rescue dog Teddy, who helped bring his owner Andy out of a coma. Put him on my chest and he woke me up, so save me again. You're my best friend, my Andy, eh? Never looked back since, have we? And see how lovable softy Isla, who's deaf, responds to some sign language training. I think she's more loving. I think she's getting that kind of attention. I don't think she's had that in a, in a previous home with the other being deaf. Five-year-old Staffy Cross Isla is deaf. Before she's rehomed, animal care assistant Joe Barrett will be training her to understand sign language. Even though she's deaf, she's she's quite a relaxed dog. If you took her for walks and stuff, you'd have to be extra careful because um, obviously she can't hear traffic and things. That would be my main concern. It's important that she learns how to follow basic visual commands to keep her safe and stop her feeling so isolated. The first trick is to always keep eye contact with Isla. Yeah, I like to see me, obviously, because she can't hear. Joe then oh. says the command and uses a clear, oh. visible hand signal. Command for sit is sit, stay or be, stay. The command for down is down. Sit. Then positive reinforcement. Isla is rewarded with a treat every time she gets it right. But it turns out this softie prefers a cuddle to edible treats. She knows that, you know, she'd come, she'd get rewards. I mean, she'd do it with treats as well, but I think she prefers this, to be honest. This is her favourite thing. And because they can't hear, I think they, you know, feel in different ways. Although you can buy vibrating collars for deaf dogs, they can be uncomfortable and are not recommended. So learning a sign language is an effective alternative and with consistent training, dogs can pick up visual cues after just a few weeks. When she first came in, she didn't know anything at all. Um, we just started using come, and I call her at the same time, and she comes over. We will start to work up to like sit and stay, uh, but it will take a couple more weeks because she's only got used to that. If you think your dog may be deaf, a vet can do a Bayer test, which detects the electrical activity in the brain in response to different sounds. I think she's made a lot of progress because she's only been about three weeks now. Um, and like I said before, she hasn't done anything like that before, ever. So that's quite good. Good girl. Joe and the team will need to repeat the training three times a day for the next few weeks before Isla has fully mastered her new language. No, nope, stop to do that. But if Isla does get the hang of it, it should stop her feeling isolated and alone. All the dogs we get in here are all challenging. Um, even though she's deaf, I don't think she's any more challenging than the other dogs to her, you know, to train. 
Her ears are doing much better too since she had them deep cleaned. Since the ears are being treated, she's getting more confidence and she's a lot happier as well. So I think they were very painful um, initially. As you can see, she's, she's quite relaxed now. That's what she likes all day. Jo will be doing a lot of work with the new owners, from making sure Isla stays on the lead in open areas so she doesn't run into dangers, to teaching them the new hand signs. We'll show what we've done. We'll keep it quite basic because we don't want her to get confused. But I think they're, they're quite easy commands to show to people. Once they get the hang of doing it, it'll just come quite natural to them. We'll catch up with Isla later to see how she's getting on. It's been less than a month since Hershey Bowl rescued 82 chihuahuas. One of the little dogs had an infected ear that looked like it would drop off and a large painful wound covering nearly all of his side. He's been undergoing some innovative laser treatment and after just three weeks, the transformation is amazing. Here he is. Wow, so that's healed really well. Yeah, so before you can see some of the scarring left, it was a patch. Yeah. Probably this sort of area. Um, now he's got some scarring here, but it's all but yeah. healed. Um, not painful. No, no, that's great. It was weeping, it was, um, there was dead skin on top of it. Um, there was the infection um, and he, he looks like better. He's starting to get some of his, some of his hair growth Hair's back. Great. He may not get any hair growth on right. this pink area there. I suspect he'll be scarred there okay. long term, but it may, it may reduce a little bit further. Um, we don't know. We just have to wait and see. So the ear then, that's... Um, the ear before... It was black. Um, it was black across the end of the tips. So he's got a bit moth-eaten and, and... But actually, it's all but healed and he's... Uh, at least he hasn't had to have surgery. We, we thought he'd need surgery when I last spoke to you. And now he's having pain relief, his mood has definitely improved too. He's been a much happier boy since he's been here. He's going out, he's, he's starting to, to play and, and mess about more since he's been here, a lot more comfortable since his right. wounds are all... Uh, all largely healed. Which is a which is a good sign, really, for his um, rehoming future, because he's a yes, very he's, sweet dog. he's a very sweet dog. He's lovely. He's been uh, no trouble at all. Oh, that's good. That's good to know. Well, number 81. We'll have to give you a name at some point soon. You can't be number 81 forever. We'll find out if he got a new name and a new family later on. Very cute. It took five months, but staff have done a fantastic job at finding nearly all the chihuahuas new homes. But there's one who's been causing them a real headache. Reggie's been extremely difficult to handle through no fault of his own, obviously. He's just a dog that is so attached to his owner, I think we can't do anything with him. He simply won't let anyone get near him. Uh, he will howl and bark and virtually scream at anyone that comes near him. It's common for dogs who live in big numbers to group together and become fearful of people. The animal home that uh, Reggie's at the moment has, has tried all the usual methods. It is an extremely difficult situation for the staff. You know, they're heartbroken by the fact that they can't touch this dog. Supervisor Lee Mayer has been trying to look after him. Hi, Lee. You all right? Hi, Hershey. You all right? Reggie's in the end section at the minute because it's, it's the quiet zone. He's been in there quite a few weeks. We had to move him because he was getting really, really stressed in the other section. The day he came in, I think he was in a pod with four other dogs, and they seemed to be, be OK together. Um, but obviously, the situation changed as he started to guard the other little dog right. in the kennel quite badly. Um, to the point where he was lunging at kennel staff and being very aggressive yeah. to the point where we couldn't even handle the other dog, which was, which was really friendly. Yeah. So, unfortunately, we had to split the little dog away from him and, and he ended up on his own. As well as permanently grounding, Reggie won't be stroked, wear a lead or eat in front of staff either. If he continues like this, his chances of finding a new home are not looking good. OK, I'll come with you then and we'll have a look at him and see what he does. Yeah. At the minute, there's a blanket on the top of his kennel. Right, OK. Um, and that's just, again, to shelter him from the noise and people going past and things like that. It keeps him a lot calmer. Right, OK. So he... OK, 
confused reaction because his tail, it's like his yeah. tail's wagging at the same time. Yeah. It, oh is, it is pure fear. Really? He's just absolutely petrified. He was never socialised, he never went out the house, so all this is incredibly scary for him. Most of the time he will choose to move away, yeah. but obviously the, the difficulty we've had with him is when you actually enter the kennel, he goes into another another zone almost. You'll eat when you're away as well. Yeah, yeah. Which, which is another fair behaviour. Yeah, you know. of course. He doesn't yeah. trust. Just doesn't trust you know, anyone. He doesn't trust people. He's physically healthy, he's just not mentally healthy at the moment, yeah. and that's what, you know, that's, the, that's harder to work on. We've got to sort of try and make sure that this dog understands that, you know, we, we mean no harm. Drastic times call for drastic measures. There is one last hope for Reggie, to see if the husband of his original owner, who died, will take him back. So the decision has been made that the best option for this dog is to return him to his owner. If this plan of mine doesn't work, then, then Reggie will have to be put to sleep. And obviously that is something that we desperately want to avoid. Poor Reggie. Find out later if Hershey's last resort is going to work. Now, Teddy here is a five-year-old Schnauzer Poodle Cross, who, in my opinion, is one of the most miraculous dogs we've ever featured. Come on, then. We're going to see them squirrels now, are we? Go see them, then. Where are they, then? Go find them, then, quick. Teddy has been living with Andy Cezaz since he was adopted from his local rescue centre five years ago. When I first saw Ted, he was a little black bundle of fluff. He was about... 12 inches long, 15 weeks old, didn't know, how, didn't know what grass was, didn't know how, how to climb stairs, but didn't know what anything was really, I don't think. And um, he turned out to be a fantastic little, little doggy, didn't he, mate? Eh? My best friend, always happy, always glad to see me. And yeah, and I wouldn't be without him for all the money in the world. Shortly after getting Teddy, Andy was diagnosed with cancer. Just after I got Ted, I had all my bail taken out, and without this little man getting me fit afterwards, I don't think I'd have made it. You're my boy, ain't you? He gave me the encouragement to take him for a walk three or four times a day. We got further and further, didn't we, mate? Taught you all the tricks while he was at home with you for 26 weeks. Oh, you clever boy you are. And he's never left my side since. Have you? They formed a really close bond. I love you too, don't I, eh? But then in December, Andy was taken ill again. I went to the States to see my mum. She wasn't very well. When I came back, I developed pneumonia and influenza A at the same time, so they had to put me into a coma. I had seven pictures of him on the wall, one of my sons and one of my wife. After he'd spent four days in a coma, Andy's wife asked staff if she could bring Teddy in for a visit. And he, she put him on my chest and he woke me up, so saved me again. Mm -hmm. In a way, I think he's my guardian angel. Mm -hmm. Aren't you, mate? Hey? My guardian angel in disguise, you are. After five days of recovery in hospital, he was finally well enough to come home. But news of his miraculous recovery quickly spread. And soon Andy received a call from the RSPCA, who wanted to honour Teddy with a special award at a ceremony in London. Got my snazzy bow tie too. Your bow tie, your train ticket, didn't we, mate, eh? Eh? And you even got a big bag of goodies to come back with. When I went up to get the nerve award, I was very nervous. And um, I wondered how Ted would be, whether he'd be phased with all the people and that, but he wasn't phased. I'd just like to say a big thank you to the RSPCA and the wonderful work they do with little characters like this. And, well, they're just amazing. Yeah. Your best friend. Thank you. It was, it was well, just fantastic. Fantastic day out. Andy believes Teddy could be just the medicine for others, too. I hope to retire next year, and as a payback to the hospital and all the staff and the wonderful work they do, I want to see if I can get Ted to be a therapy dog, to go in the hospital two or three days a week, to cheer other people, eh? Because it, it's, it's, to see an animal in there, and a wonder, it's a wonderful thing. It always makes you feel better. So we go give some payback, Ted, eh? I mean, if ever anyone asked me about getting a rescue dog, I wouldn't hesitate. These wonderful little dogs, who've been mistreated and looked after, but they give you so much back. Well worth it, aren't you, eh? What a great ending for Teddy and Andy. Coming up, terrified Reggie reacts to returning home. He was virtually unhandleable. 
when you actually enter the kennel, he does go into that attack mode. Almost semi-wild, he would freak out if we went anywhere near him. And see how deaf Isla is responded to her sign language training. She's more loving. I think she's getting that kind of attention. I don't think she's had that in a, in a previous home with the other being deaf. And if you think you've got what it takes to be a dog rescuer, we might just have the one for you. Earlier, we saw how a pioneering laser technique had helped heal a painful burn on the side of number 81, one of the dogs Hershey Bowl rescued from the house overflowing with chihuahuas. I'll have to give you a name at some point soon. You can't be number 81 forever. Well, he is now called Toby. His wound is much better, and he's with his new forever family, the Hinklands. Good on you, Toby. Reggie is another of the 82 dogs Hershey Bowl rescued from a house after one of their owners suddenly died. But he's been impossible to handle. It is pure fear. He's just absolutely petrified. He was virtually unhandleable. When you actually enter the kennel, he does go into that attack mode yep. now because he thinks that's the first line of yeah. defence. Almost sort of semi-wild, he would freak out if we went anywhere near him. It was a very, very, very upsetting thing to watch. Hershey has found one person with whom Reggie behaves completely differently. The husband of the owner who passed away, Stephen Bayliss. It wasn't Stephen's intention to ever have this many dogs. His wife just couldn't bring herself to let them go. And when they were puppies and they were born in the property, she got very attached to them and then would keep them. She wasn't selling them, she wasn't deliberately breeding them, it was just sort of happening. They weren't making any money from this. Once puppies were born, she just didn't have the heart to let them go, she didn't want to rehome them. Since then, Hershey has been working with Stephen to rehome the 82 chihuahuas. There are four he would like to take back. Tinkerbell and Blue, who were his first dogs and who the 80 other dogs are all descended from. Darling, look at you. Chocky. Brilliant. And of course, Reggie. The owner has managed to sort out the property completely, made a massive transformation. In fact, the biggest transformation that I've ever seen in a, in a property in 17 years. I honestly did think, you know, in my darkest moments with this case and, and with these dogs, there really was, in my mind, a, a, an absolute possibility that Reggie was going to have to be put to sleep. And, and that was my biggest fear. So I am extremely relieved. It's been five months since these guys were taken away. Hello. Hello. Hi, Stephen, you all right? All right, sir. Good, brilliant. Thanks. Nice to Thanks. see you. Thanks. I've got all four of them yeah. in the van. They'll be very uh, happy. Hello. Who's this? Hello. Tinker. First, it's out with Tinkerbell and Blue. Oh, who's that? Yeah. Right, if you want to grab her first. Tink. You grab her first and I'll grab... Come Tinker. Because they're, they're better off and I'll grab Blue. Hello, monkey. Good tinker. Oh, you're a good boy. Good girl. Oh, let's take you good into girl. your new home. Hello. Good girl. Oh, he's heard you, isn't he? Look, can you already? Yeah. Oh, you're Back next, darling. Bit, you're next. Oh, see, that's why you're going to pick him up, not me. Yeah, yeah. Come on, then. Come on, then. Hey, little boy. Coming home. Oh, Reggie. Right, I'll let you. Come hey, on, Reggie. darling. Come on, Reggie. Come on, Reggie. Oh, there you go. Good boy, yeah. Hello, Come Reg. on, then. Reggie is finally back where he's always wanted to be. Hello. Look at him, look. <laughs> look at him. <laughs> right. So happy. You know, they're in this lovely home and they're, they're all going to do wonderfully. Look, he's quite happily running around yeah, with yeah. them. He's not, he's not at all bothered. Yeah. They can smell all the whole pile of toys in there, isn't there? Yeah. Look at him. He's overjoyed, aren't he? Oh, look. Look at him, he's so happy to be back. <laughs> well, you know where I am if you need anything. Yeah, I thank you, help. No, you're welcome. Yeah, you're really welcome, cool. and I appreciate your time. Yeah, I know you. Okay. Bye, girls and boys. Bye bye. Oh, so thank you. Good girl. It's an amazing transformation from the yappy, unfriendly dog he's been for the last few months. It's now the end of, of this whole case for me, and I'm extremely happy that it's, um, that it's gone really well and that the dogs are happy and settled.
five-year-old Staffy Cross Isla is deaf. She's been learning sign language at the Animal Centre on the Wirral for a few weeks now, and she's responding really well. She's been doing a lot more training. Uh, as you can see, she will come now. And sit. That's it. So she knows that's come. And now I don't really say the words now, I just, she kind of responds to my hand signals. Good girl. And it's really boosted Isla's confidence. Do you like them? Go. I think she's come out a bit more. I think she's more loving. I think she's getting that kind of attention. I don't think she's had that in her, in her previous home with the, rather than being deaf. I think she's just been left. I think she'll make a lovely pet. She's so affectionate and so loving. I think she craves that family unit. Well, that's just what she's found in the Jones family, her new forever home, where she's getting cuddles left, right and centre. Well done, Isla. As you've seen in the programme, many rescue dogs don't have the best start in life, but that doesn't mean that they can't make incredible pets. The RSPCA care for thousands of them, and there's often lots of work that needs to be done to get them ready for rehoming. And here's just one of the wonderful dogs they've been looking after. This is Harry. He's a 10-year-old Staffordshire Bull Terrier crossbreed. Been with us now at Southbridge for over six months. Hello, Harry. Harry um, was rehomed by his previous owner six years ago. Unfortunately, their circumstances changed and he got returned to us. So now he's looking for his special forever home. Harry has found kennel life um, very stressful. He finds being around the other dogs makes him very anxious. I feel very sad for him that he's not found his special forever home yet. Um, he's been waiting a long time. He's an older boy and he really just deserves that second chance to be cuddled and loved. So the home we're looking for for Harry be an adult-only home, so it's nice and quiet for him. Also, I think he would really like to be the only pet in the home, um, so he can get all the attention for himself. Harry really deserves his forever home, because he's really struggling in kennels. He's been here a very long time, and he's got a lot of love to give. So, if you're looking for a four-legged best friend in your life, remember to make your local rescue centre your first stop, where you'll find plenty of deserving candidates desperate to brighten up your home. Next time on The Dog Rescuers. One of the biggest dogs I've ever picked up. Inspector Anthony Joins meets his match when he rescues a rather large rockfiler. I know, I'm only really skinny, so I think he weighs about the same as me. <laughs> it's a sad goodbye for the owner of an elderly Akita called Bear. So now I'll try and repay a favour and do what's best for her. I'll see you later, Bear. And I'll be finding out how Oliver's incredible nose has transformed someone's life.